An altar is a place where humanity meets with divinity or spirits. An altar is a place where sacrifices are made. An altar is a place where covenants are established. An altar is a place of worship, a place where dreams and visions are produced. An altar is a place to change the destiny of a person, family, community, group, or nation. I will say that again. An altar is a place to change the destiny of a person, family, community, group, or nation. So when we speak about the scripture that says rebellion is as witchcraft, indeed, witchcraft is not necessarily and solely the physical act of, of, of having these altars, you know, having your these items on your table, lighting candles and all of these things. But witchcraft is a manipulation of circumstance, a manipulation of responses, a manipulation, an invitation, and an elicitation of a change, a change of someone's mind, a change of someone's spirit, a change of someone's destiny. One could even say, as I often say, marketing and advertising is a supreme form of witchcraft, changing our minds. How many of us were sitting on the couch and did not, weren't even hungry, and we saw an advertisement for some defiled food, some non-kosher food, some unclean food, <laughs> some fast food, and then all of a sudden you felt compelled to desire and consume that thing. We are compelled through manipulation, through witchcraft, to change our minds. To chase after something we truly don't need. To change our circumstance. Advertising is a series of false promises. The manipulation of our hopes and dreams, the manipulation of even our insecurities and the implantation of seeds of doubt and insufficiency, dissatisfaction and insecurity, which is manipulated to make us buy things that we don't need to change our reality. So your television, your computer, your tablet, your devices can themselves be seen as altars. Witchcraft is rebellion in the sense that when we are not satisfied with what we have and who we are presently, when we are not satisfied with what the Most High has given us or created us to be, we doubt his will and arrogantly seek to change our destinies through our own will. An, a, a child's movie that comes to mind is the movie Brave a Disney movie, of course, and notice that every single Disney movie contains witchcraft, contains witches and wizards, and shows the process of witchcraft. The best, I feel, Disney movies are uh, The Princess and the Frog and the movie Brave, which in a very real sense, I believe even adults can benefit from watching to see how witchcraft really works. In the movie Brave, she literally says she wants to change her fate and thus changes the identity of her own mother. Um, it's very brilliant. And um, Princess and the Frog is another brilliant thing. I, I'll go into that later. I'll probably make a whole video because um, <laughs> they really are on point with how they show how witchcraft is rebellion, how we chase things that we think we want. And remember, I always say wanting to want something is to lack something, to be devoid of something, to be missing something. So the enemy always manipulates our mind by making us think we're missing out on something, which was the first sin in the garden. In the garden, the serpent beguiled Chawa by making her think she was missing out on something. She was denied something. She was deprived of something, that she lacked something, and thus she wanted knowledge of good and evil and became one with it. So witchcraft is the idea that you're missing something and the rush, 
to take a shortcut at the expense of your own soul to get what you think you are lacking instead of being satisfied with the abundance of everything that you are, everything that the Most High has given you. Witchcraft is a shortcut that indeed cuts your life short. <laughs>